Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Pierre Van Altrip. I'm a senior software engineer at AMD. And I'm here to present uh, some recent contribution to the global ISO infrastructure that I worked on last year and I'm still working on. Uh, so in case you're not familiar with Global ISIL, here's a quick summary. Um, so Global ISIL is an alternative to uh, DAG-based instruction selection. It reuses the machine IR uh, representation with some small twists, new opcodes uh, to make it more generic. Um, it also operates on a function scope instead of a basic block scope, uh, which allows for smarter instruction selection. Um, so Global ISIL also needs to combine code like the DAG does. Um, so combines are just small, like, I guess, people optimization uh, where you match a pattern of code and replace it with something that's either com like more efficient in any case, so that would be like a generic transform, or something that's more efficient for the specific target you're dealing with. Uh, so something it can select better, something that's faster, but only on that architecture. Uh, an example of a common generic combine, as we call it, is uh, replacing mul by zero with zero. Uh, that's faster on any target. Um, so um, we use table gen to declare combined rules and emit all the repetitive uh, matching and rewriting code for us. Um, so this is what a rule uh, would look. So what a combined rule would look like before um, in table gen. Uh, note that we only match the root op code, which is the whip match op code. Uh, fabs that you see at the top, and then everything else is C++. So you have the match logic in C++ and the apply logic that's also in C++. Uh, let's look at another example. This one matches a few different opcodes, but again, same deal. Uh, we just put a list of opcodes we want to look at. Then everything is C++ for the matching and rewriting. Um, so that's the how the backend worked before. And the, before the backend also emitted C++ code, um, which worked well, but was kind of limited because you had to make inefficient code just so it would be easier to generate. And um, the emitter did make some optimization to reduce code size, but it wasn't as clever as what, for instance, the DAG backend would do. So the DAG emits also a match table, and that does quite a bit more. Um, so what did I hope by uh, refactoring the global ISL combiner backend? So I did both refactoring of how the backend works, and I added more patterns, which I'll cover after. Uh, the first goal I wanted to do was uh, unifying the instruction selector and combiner infrastructure. So instruction selection and combiners are kind of the same thing. You match some piece of code, you replace it with something else. Um, and the instruction selector was already using an optimized state machine. So instead of emitting that C++ code we saw before, it would emit a some kind of state machine, yeah, like a big table with custom opcodes. Um, and the second goal was to uh, set up a foundation for doing more in pure table gens. So I wanted to get rid of C++ for trivial rules, because um, you could just express it like you would express uh, ISO pattern, the DAG, so you have the in, the out, uh, what you want to match, what you want to rewrite. Um, yeah. Um, so this is what the um, rule we saw before now looks like uh, with this refactor and using mirror patterns. You see that now all the C++ is eliminated for this trivial rematching. Uh, we just directly match the opcode and emit the output. Um, this is what the other one looks like. Uh, it's a bit more complex, but you see we also have a patch rack system which allows you to specify multiple possible matches and then use that kind of template uh, as you would use another instruction. So in this case, it would um, duplicate the rule three times, once for freeze, abs, and canonicalize uh, just automatically for you. And you also see there's uh, in the apply part of the rule, um, there is a replace register special operator, which is, um, I call them magic operators. It just calls a function for you without having to write all the C++. So you can just use it like you would use an instruction, except it's C++ for you. Uh, another cool thing about the merge pattern is that there's some trivial type inference, uh, which allows you to uh, not have to put types everywhere. So in this simple case, you see that it infers that the type of the x input operand is the um, would be the same type as the immediate that you're trying to emit. Um, 
without type inference, you would have to duplicate that rule like I don't know so many times to uh, for like for every type, I32, I64 vector types. And at that point, most people would just use C++ because it would be less, uh, less annoying. Um, so this is what the output uh, of the backend looks like now. Uh, you see that it's still C++, but now it's a state machine. So this is all a big array and it's a lot more compact. Um, and it also offers more room for optimization because now that we have a complete picture of what the, the matching you're trying to do, we can try to merge some opcodes together. We can try to merge common code paths um, into a similar branch. Um, and in theory, it could be faster. Um, didn't do much testing on that front. We observed some very small um, compile time improvements when this change landed, but so small that I would, wouldn't rule out a statistical error, so I don't want to say it's faster. Um, so another thing that I did with this backend, uh, the combiner backend while rewriting it, is that I completely avoided the assert is an error style that's commonly used in table gen. Uh, I treated this more like a compiler front end where you try to di diagnose errors early and reject the code instead of crashing. Um, and I also focused, wait, I'm crashing, okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think this makes the backend a lot more usable uh, because instead of having a huge stack trace and seeing some obscure assertion trip, you just have a clean error and the errors tell you exactly what pattern, where uh, it points at the location. You don't see the location there, but it would show the location and the squiggles in your favorite code editor. Um, so another thing is that I aimed on uh, having good test coverage. Um, Test coverage is never perfect, of course, but I tried to test every non-trivial code path and even the trivial ones that I could think of to make it so if you want to contribute to the backend, you immediately see um, the implications of your change. I also designed the backend with reusability in mind. Uh, for instance, all the pattern hierarchy, all the pattern parsing logic is completely separate from the backend, which I hope will enable some experimentation with some either new backend or integrating uh, more patterns in uh, current, ex current existing backend. So MER patterns are not perfect at all. Um, MER patterns currently only work for simple patterns, many rules. The, ma the majority of rules really use uh, C++ still. Uh, MER patterns cannot use also things like known bits, constraint, express, um, express more complicated constraints like uh, constants and multiple of two, etc. cetera. Uh, can do recursive matching. The tree has to be a bit fixed ahead of time. Uh, and this is a trade-off. Some patterns are just a bit, would be a bit too annoying to uh, express using table gen and sometimes just easier to use uh, C++. Um, so yeah, um, now at this project, I'm a bit reaching a stage where I don't know where to go next because uh, I tried for a while looking at new rules to port, like thinking, hey, why can't we do this in table gen? And often, it takes a lot of effort to get uh, those rules ported because you need to implement very specific features, maybe add a whole new syntax to express a constraint that you would need in that specific pattern. And often I feel like it's a few days of work just to port one pattern table, and at that point it's not worth it. Um, but I'm really curious to hear about other use cases, maybe downstream, if you think a feature is missing in more patterns that you would like that would allow you to use them more. Please give feedback, please come talk to me. I'm also interested in looking at, should we use MER patterns for global ISL uh, instruction selection patterns? Because we also have sometimes cases where we wish we had the global ISL only uh, selection pattern and expressing those using the DAG can be a bit difficult. Uh, so I'm wondering if we should just allow MER patterns to be used in that case. Another point that I was thinking about is that uh, the DAG syntax is a bit limiting. So you saw that we use uh, just the DAG syntax, the built-in syntax table gen to express those more patterns. But I'm wondering if we should just consider par parsing like some code directly and have like a mer DSL for pattern matching, which might give us more freedom. It's a huge complexity increase, but if you want to implement more specific features, it might be better than having like 10,000 parentheses with custom tables and uh, um, operations. So that's it. Uh, essentially, my message just if this 
interesting to you, if you like this feature, if you don't like this feature because it's limited in a way, uh, please come talk to me, please open an issue. I would love to help and I would love to hear out your ideas.